Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. See, I grew up at another age. Welcome to The Savage Nation. Now, talk radio has become so boring that I had to play a Texaco song to remind you that radio is primarily an entertainment medium. Many people in radio think that they're like failed junior college professors who are supposed to hock you in the head until your brains go dead uh, about the Constitution or about the Bill of Rights. All important, but people don't want to hear it anymore, number one. Number two, politics, I do it. But the fact of the matter is, at the end of the day, how much can you take of it? So I have always tried to integrate humor, politics, nutrition, science, personal lifestyle. In other words, an all-around show, which is the only direction I can do a show in. So let me tell you what happened today before I get to the politics, because I'll get there. I mean, I'll tell you about slamming the door shut on the refugees that Obama wants to flood America with. I will tell you about that. I will tell you my plan straight out, shut the borders, shut the government down, seal the borders, shut the government down, close it down. Shut it down. Forget about shutting the government down. Shut everything down. Lock it down. I'm not going to tell you that if Obama, the madman, the psycho, gets away with bringing in 200,000 refugees from the Middle East, this country is gone. The man is a madman, a maniac. Nobody wants them here. He only wants them here for the votes and to change the demographics because he hates the, well, how shall I put it? How shall I put who he hates so much that he wants to fundamentally change the demographics of America to the point where they will never return? But that's not what I wanted to talk about, even though I just did. No, here's what I want to talk about. Something simple. You know, they say that all politics are very local and all politics are very personal. I would say that all politics are very uh, physical. Because at the end of the day, we're still human beings. We have issues, toothaches, headaches, right? A nosebleed, a backache. Whatever, the erectile dysfunction, whatever people have to work with, hypoglycemia, it all happens to us. And we deal with it, and that becomes bigger than, than Syria. In other words, if you have an ingrown toenail, it's more important to you than, than Syria is. So let me tell you what happens. I'm looking at the scale, and I see my weight shot up over the last month to 190. Now, I've been like 178, which is already too high for a long time, but I could live with it. Then I, all of a sudden, I see a fat clemenza in the scale. I'm looking in the mirror. I don't look like I put on 12 pounds, but I'm feeling like, what's going on here? What is there, a metabolic problem? And no matter what I do, I've been starving myself, changed my diet. I went for blood tests, still 190, no matter what I do. So suddenly this morning, I looked down at the scale a little more closely, and I see the maid hit the knob on the bottom and set it a, and <laughs> said with the broom. She pushed it up 12 pounds before I even started. So I picked it up and, and turned the dial back to zero and back to 178 pounds. And I realized the whole thing was because the maid accidentally pushed the knob on the bottom of the scale and gave me a, an instant 12-pound gain. So what's the point of the story? I don't know the point of the story. It's very personal. Now, to top that off, because of this weight gain that didn't happen, the, the imaginary weight gain, look how this thing is building in my head. I called a doctor. I never see doctors. Everyone says, who's your regular doctor? I don't have one. How could you not have a doctor? I don't have a doctor. I have one doctor I call who's nice enough. He's a cardiologist. He gives me tests for anything I want once a year. Well, who's your regular primary care doctor? I said, I am. Okay, forget about it. So I, I, I said, look, I need blood tests. So I go to the hospital this morning for blood tests after fasting. I have hypoglycemia to begin with. I don't have to tell you, I hate fasting. That's why I'm not religious. If there was a religion without any fasting in it, I would consider joining that religion. But there's not a religion on the planet, I think, other than perhaps Wicca, where, uh, where you don't have to fast. Every religion, even the Jews, once a year they fast. Even Reformed Jews, I would say, I would say even Katzenberg, Katzenberg, Matzenberg, and Ratzenberg fast once a year for about 10 minutes to remember who they really are. But the thing is, there are religions where you fast all the time. Every other day is a fast day. That religion and I couldn't get along. I can't be in that kind of religion. I cannot fast and be in a religion. I think the whole reason for fasting with religion, by the way, I thought about it, is to make people so dizzy with low blood sugar that they'll believe anything that the guy up on the podium says, including an imaginary uh, dictate from heaven about how you're supposed to behave. The people are so dizzy 
They can't wait for the holiday to be over. They can go grab a snack. That whatever he says, they'll say yes and throw him some money and get out of there. So I go to the hospital for the blood test this morning, and I went into the wrong, uh, the wrong door. They signed me up like I had a, a major injury or an accident. All I went in for was a, some blood work, that blood withdrawn. And unfortunately, my assistant did not look up where the lab was. He took me into the hospital. I had to go through elevators. The next thing I knew, they're putting a wristband on me. I see stretchers going by. I said, what is going on here? I just want the, the laboratory. Well, it's down this hall, up this hall, go to the second floor. It took me 20 minutes to take. What's your primary insurance? What's your... I said, man, am I in the right place? I'm just coming to get some blood work done on cholesterol and blood sugar. And she's, yeah, you're in the right. It's our laboratory. And it went on for 20 minutes. Meanwhile, patients are going by with blood in their head. People are rushing and screaming in the corridor. I said, this can't be the right place. I just came in for a, some blood work. Where am I? Now, on top of it all, the temperature in there is about 18 degrees. You need a fur coat in the summertime to get your blood drawn now. You can get pneumonia just standing in the laboratory waiting for your blood work. I, I want you to understand what I'm trying to tell you here. Life is actually quite funny if you look at it for what it is. This is definitely the equivalent of a Seinfeld or a Larry David scene. This is the kind of stuff that Larry David would have turned into an entire show in his heyday. Even though I hate his politics, he is a funny man. A total uh, left-wing goofball, but funny, very funny. That's the day. That's what happened. Finally had the blood drawn. I have a headache. My blood sugar is still low. The dog doesn't even want to eat. He's so depressed from my low blood sugar. And that's the opening to my show. And now let's start with some old rock and roll, and I'll get into the politics of the day right here on the Savage Nation. Robert, give me some rock and roll, please. Let's start the show because I can see the average, average person turn the show off already. They're waiting for me to talk about Obama and uh, Trump and uh, Adolf Hitler and uh, how come there isn't gun control on Mars, even though they looked at Mars and there's water. Why are there no guns on it? Why are there guns? They found a gun. And the reason that Mars has no population is because it proved beyond a reasonable doubt that global warming and guns caused the population decline. And as a result of that, we all have to kick in more money to the U.N. so they get buy more prostitutes and the... Uh, and, and basketball courts for the houses in Dobbs Ferry, etc. It implies a woman's a nympho. And as you well know, since women have become like men, I mean, the modality in America today is all women are like dogs, just like the men. Hey, I could do anything a man wants to do. I can go sleep around and go out till 4.30 in the morning and wind up in a doorway with my panties in my pocketbook. Hey, I'm free. I'm free. I can do anything I want. This is America, isn't it? Yeah, that, that, that doorway. Dermatologist from Inhasset. Three children, lovely husband, winds up in a doorway with the head against the door. Unbelievable contusions on the neck. And the drug dealer she was with doesn't know how it happened. He pulled it down in the doorway. The NYPD has reached such a point that they don't even arrest the guy who left her in the doorway on a videotape. What in the world is going on? They showed, they have a videotape of a guy pulling the, the dermatologist downstairs after she's coked up, according to the story, leaving her in a the doorway. They interview him and they let him go. What is that about? What kind of police work is this? And you want me to worry about the refugees Obama wants to bring into the country? Oh, my God, 200,000 of them. The borders, I say, shut down this government, my friends, until the borders are secure. Just shut them down. You know, the Republicans are such cowards. I mean, what do you expect? You take a look. We know Boehner's. I'm not going to say Boehner and McConnell like it's the first time you heard it. You know who they are. You know exactly who they are. They're sold-out, compromised losers. They're bought and sold. They got what they wanted. Mc McConnell negotiated the whole deal last year just for some coal job in Kentucky. He got the coal and suddenly he capitulated all the way over to the, to the left side, right? Boehner was never anywhere but where he was supposed to be, which was inside Obama's rear pocket. So when Obama sat down, it sounded like a whoopee cushion coming out of Boehner's mouth. In other words, they put a a Boehner doll inside Obama's rear pocket. So every time Obama sat down to give a speech, you heard Boehner squeak, as I say, like a, like a, like a whoopee cushion. So that's, that's the speaker of the other, other party. Uh, unbelievable to me. But there are people in the Republican Party who could shut this government down. And I say shut her down. Just shut it down. Shut it down. Not a dollar. We control the purse strings. You're not getting a dime. All your, all your departments are shut down. I don't care if the post office doesn't deliver a letter. I don't care if nothing works. We're shutting it down until you shut that border. It's that simple. I am not going to let the psychopath in the White House flood 200,000 Muslims from Syria into this country. End of story. Why is that a bad policy? Tell me what's wrong with my idea of shut it down. I want to know. Don't call on this because I don't want to talk about it anymore. I got it out of my system. I'm going to have some orange juice. I'll be back.
Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. I got a headache to begin with. It's cutting right through my left brain. Welcome to the show. I don't know. I have, I have hypoglycemia. I got to watch my blood sugar very carefully. Nobody has the energy I have in radio. You know that. Three hours. Three hours a day, radio, 21 years, I do it. I do it well. But right now, the top of the head feels like a piece of it should be removed and uh, Ben Carson should go in and leave a piece of cotton in there. That's they're trying to smear him now. They left cotton in a child's brain. That's how low they'll go? Nothing about Benghazi. Nothing about the corruption of the Clintons. Nothing about Obama being mentally imbalanced and should be in a nut house. Now that Ben Carson left cotton in a kid's head. This is the press that we have in America. You know something, they wouldn't have gotten away with this in Russia during the Soviet Union era. Izvestia wouldn't have gone to this level of, of uh, what Woodpecker, what's his name? I forget his name, I call him Woodpecker. Why do I call him Woodpecker? What's his real name when I call Woodpecker? No, no one even knows what I'm talking about. It's, my own staff can't even answer me. I'm asking, I'm groping. Who? Jake Tapper, I call Jake Woodpecker. Why? Because he has the brains of a Woodpecker that was shot with a BB gun. But he knows how to, uh, to tie a uh, Windsor knot. Hillary Rotten Clinton says the jail was the right thing for the Kentucky clerk. She's really groping, man, for the lowest level of the American voter. She's going for the abortionists. That's, that's her base is the abortionists. I mean, this she has to talk about when the Supreme, when the Pope himself said it was the wrong thing. Hillary Rotten Clinton today said the jail was the right thing for a Kentucky clerk who refused to issue marriage licenses to same-sex couples. Who is she appeasing here? Who is she appealing to? Speaking in Iowa? What group was she speaking in front of? The abortion industry of America? Let's see, that would be AIA. Yeah, the AIA, the abortion industry of America. Euthanasia, euthanasiasts of America. This is sickening what she is. This woman is far worse than anybody could imagine. Clinton spoke at Cornell College in Mount Vernon, Iowa. Where is Cornell College in Mount Vernon, Iowa? Who was in the, who was in the audience? The radical feminists who took it over and introduced Wiccan into the university? Tore down the crosses and converted the, the chapel of the university into a, a Wiccan haven, Claven? That's who she's speaking to. Clinton said people are entitled to their private beliefs, but that when you take an oath to uphold the Constitution of the United States, that is your job. Oh, really? How about the hidden emails, the 30,000 hidden emails? That isn't in the title of your job? That wasn't your job title? Or how about killing Gaddafi when he begged for his life and said, don't kill me because if I die, you're going to have chaos here? Wasn't that part of your constitutional responsibilities was to not have him ordered killed? All right, what can I tell you? KFAYR, Kansas, we have time for one call. Fire away, you're on the Savage Nation. What's on your mind? Wonderful show. I love your sarcasm. I love your style. The whole show reminds me of a trip down Highway 1 on the coast. Going, I don't ever know what's coming on the next band. It keeps <laughs> <laughs> well, that's kind of a compliment and a curse in a way. It's like, yeah, that guy's so good, we don't know what's coming around the next bend because he's gone around the bend. We don't know what he's going to say. He doesn't know what he's going to say. I love spontaneity. I've, I've listened to all. I've been a lot of time on the road. The others put me to death. And you, you well, always. I'm, I'm not going. I'm not going to put them down. I think it. Uh, everyone stands on their own. Uh, their own two t two tongues. Uh, and the fact of them. <laughs> I mean, really, everybody stands on their own two tongues in radio. And the thing is, is I don't. I have one tongue, and I speak from that one tongue. The fact of the matter is. I cannot do politics three hours in a row. Who could listen to that? Can you listen to politics for three straight hours? No, I, that's why I switched. <laughs> but the well, I, I know what you mean. I'd rather switch than fight. I get it. Uh, but we have trouble in the country. We all know that. But how many times can I say the same thing about the psycho in the White House? The man is an out-of-control psychopath. He knows that most Americans do not want the country flooded with immigrants to begin with. So now he triples down. Not only is he saying we're having more from Central America and Mexico, but now to top it off, he's bringing in 200,000 Muslim men from Syria. What sane country permits this without stopping the man in his tracks? They call him out. They throw him out. They make the Democrat Party stop it before it's too late. Why am I wrong in saying that? Yeah, you're not wrong. And I believe the majority of us agree with it. That's why so many Well, that's correct. That's why I'm not going to do. That's why I'm not going to do politics all day today. I know I'm right.
Nobody can disagree with me. Can anyone listening to this show tell me how 200,000 Syrian refugees, almost all of them Muslims, 80% of them young males, how are they going to enrich this society? Can anyone raise their hand and tell me how? Can you tell me how they're going to enrich?